While in Florida, we met up with Polk County Fire Rescue to highlight their chlorine safety training evolution with the HazSim Pro 2 system. Polk County Fire Rescue really put on a great training evolution. And a special thanks to Safety Solutions and Supply for the use of their great training facilities. After the event, Firehouse.com did a great write-up. They highlight how HazSim really did play a key role and I love how they use the term ultra-realistic training. Let's join Captain Jordan Webster as he shows us the setup of the HazSim unit at the beginning of the training evolution. All right, so uh, we're here in uh, Polk County Fire Rescue with a special operations team. Uh, we're doing our training today on a, uh, a chlorine leak or an unknown leak whenever we get there. Um, our crews are going to come in, they're going to do some brief recon, uh, and whenever they get exposed to whatever is releasing, uh, we'll change our game plan. We're going to go back into a uh, level A uh, for mitigation of the leak, and then we are going to come out and we'll go through a full technical decon. Um, all in while we're using our uh, HazSim to confirm our ventilation efforts, our mitigation efforts, and then our decon efforts. So how we have our HazSim set up here in uh, Polk County is uh, we have nine different meters uh, throughout the county and we've set up so if Battalion 6 comes in it looks identical to Battalion 6's which is a multi-ray pro. Uh, but if our squads come in, they might not have uh, the same sensors that they have. So we've adjusted everybody's uh, meter set to match their multi-rays uh, identically. So when they come in a train, it looks exactly like the multi-ray that they have. So we go in uh, for today's scenario, we're going to use uh, Heavy 9 2, uh, which is uh, the chlorine sensor, um, along with our oxygen, LEL, CO, hydrogen sulfide and our uh, PID. We'll select it and we're ready to go. So everything's going to run off of this. If we want to go in and adjust um, our oxygen settings, if we have something that's uh, producing a little bit more oxygen, we can uh, just click an arrow and it's going up. Whenever we hit our meters uh, alarm, it'll go off and those are set up all identical to what our meters are too. Uh, so if our crew goes in and ventilates, and it returns back to normal, we can easily hit norm. Uh, or let's say they're going in and they open up the door, uh, like today, and they get introduced to a little bit of chlorine. The meter's gonna start uh, increasing as they get exposed to more, and eventually it'll go in alarm as well. Um, if they're doing a, a decent job ventilating and uh, we wanna bump it down, we can bump it down, and if we get a good gust of wind and everything returns to normal, we can easily hit norm. Setting up for command, uh, getting all the units ready. Gas leak for squad 15, rescue 15, engine 4, heavy 9, battalion 6, battalion 7. All units select TAC 12, TAC 12. I'm Captain Webster with uh, Polk County Fire Rescue. Our uh, drill card for the day is going to be on a chlorine leak. Uh, we have set our uh, heavy 9 meter up to look exactly like it does on the HESM as it does our multi-ray. Um, so what we'll do is as our crews uh, arrive on scene, they'll go into recon mode and uh, give a size up of the building. And what, what they're introduced to is a shed type area uh, with a plume of smoke coming uh, from any orifice that uh, has a freed area. Um, so whenever we, uh, whenever we start walking up to the building, uh, what I'll do is I'll increase the chlorine levels uh, to uh, 0.2 parts per million, uh, just as it says on the drill card. And then they'll go up and they'll start surveying. They'll watch their pH paper, they'll watch their other meters uh, that they're carrying with them. Um, and as they get closer to the door, I'll go ahead and do a jump on my parts per million for chlorine. Um, and what they're seeing on their meter is they're seeing their normal 20.9 oxygen and uh, zero readings on their LEL, zero on CO, zero on hydrogen sulfide, zero on VOC. And then now they're starting to pick up a 1.2 parts per million um, on the chlorine sensor. 
Um, so as they survey, um, they'll go and they'll pop open the door just so they can recon a little bit more. And we're gonna go ahead and per the drill card, we'll increase our uh, parts per million up. So they start getting a reading. And then it's gonna start alarming just like our multi-rays would. Uh, so they're going to radio back to, uh, to command that they did get a positive change on uh, their pH paper, it flashed blue, and then now their uh, multi-ray or has sim is going off. So I can uh, go back to normal or I can slowly uh, decrease the parts per million as they're walking away um, or as the, you know, the uh, natural ventilation starts happening. So uh, we went in and uh, turned out an SCBA for uh, recon because we were introduced to an unknown. Uh, that's what they got when they arrived on scene. Uh, they went in with their uh, HASM um, and pH paper and they confirmed findings of chlorine. So what we're going to do now is we're going to back out and we're going to switch to a level A uh, type entry. Um, and then since we did have a positive change on our corrosivity, uh, we're not going to bring our HASM or multi-ray back into the environment. We'll go in, we'll mitigate the issue. Um, and then we'll start uh, ventilation efforts and then we'll go back in later on as we have ventilation to confirm our uh, mitigation phase. Give you an update. The situation has been mitigated. Crews are making their way through being gone now. I copy. All units under control. All right, so they're getting set up for decon right now. Oh, yeah, it's gonna flow water and... No yeah. flow water. No, but we're, we'll go everything. You're going to have to instruct them because it's an engine crew just like we normally would use an engine crew for it. So uh, whenever we go through decom, we do a three step. We'll do a gross wash, we'll, uh, or a rinse, then we'll wash, and then we rinse again. And then our decon officer will come back with uh, our multi-rayer HASM um, and then also pH paper and they'll test them. If they get a positive change on the uh, pH paper or if they get a uh, positive change on the multi-rayer HASM, then what they'll do is they'll uh, go back through our decon phase again to get a clean uh, hit on everything. Once we are clean, then they're free to enter the warm zone back into the cold zone and get uh, rehabbed. Uh, yeah, this is this is was my first time using the Hasim uh, meter. Uh, we uh, we have a lot of meters on our uh, heavy rescue. Uh, the, the county does a good job of furnishing us a lot of equipment and a lot of means uh, like that. Uh, but this is the first time it has, has SIM and it was very, very easy to use. Um, you can navigate through it. You can, uh, you can change uh, what you want it to read. There's, there's many different uh, products or hazardous uh, chemicals that it can read and um, very self-explanatory. It breaks them up parts per million, percentage, LEL. There's, there's multiple things or multiple ways you can use this meter. So I would recommend it. It's a very good meter. Um, so we used our HASM. This was really our first training scenario that we used to have some HASM. And normally what we would do is we would just use our multi-ray and we would go about our scenario and then we would have somebody behind us in our ear or uh, little play cards saying that these are what your readings are. Uh, but now with HASM we were able to uh, give our entry team the meter and we were able to remotely change the parts per million depending on what they did. So as they got closer to the building, we were able to increase our parts per million. As they uh, mitigated the issue and ventilation efforts were uh, working, we were able to lower the numbers. Uh, so it really does help us in understanding our meters, seeing what we're doing, um, and uh, you know, I think it's a, a great tool that we're gonna start using a lot more often. So we're still here at uh, Safety Solutions. Uh, this big conference room we used uh, before our scenario, we came in and uh, briefed our crews exactly what we were going to do. Um, afterwards, it was nice to come in here, cool off in the AC, and then we debriefed the training scenario, see if there were things that we could do differently next time, uh, better, what happened, what went wrong, and how we can really improve ourselves. Thanks for watching. Be sure to get in touch and let us know what you'd like to see on future Hazmat Roadshow TV segments as we travel throughout North America. Like and subscribe so we can continue to help Hazmat teams and first responders every day. See you on scene with Hazmat Roadshow TV.